Shat e shake do shit in the e Natasha Martinez in a shit. Hunting up in shle. Nah hey bushes chin. Sit na jenny does she nully. Nah hey does she che. Hello, my name is Natasha. Um, I'm originally from Gallup, New Mexico. Um, I live out in Arizona on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community Reservation. Uh, I have been painting for as long as I can remember. Uh, in Gallup High, I had all the art classes that I could take there, and when I graduated, I went to school at the Institute of American Indian Arts, where I got my degree in fine arts. Um, currently, I work at Salt River Schools, and I teach work workshops to kids here and there, um, showing them like the fundamentals of painting and uh, kind of what I'm showing you today. Um, this is my technique. I know that everybody has a different way of painting. Um, they draw inspiration from different uh, things in their lives. Uh, for me, like growing up, I was raised on, on the Navajo Reservation. Um, my grandmother, my uncles, my aunts, my mom, we lived way out in the sticks where we had no running water or no electricity. So we grew up listening to stories from my grandparents. Um, my grandmother, she would talk to us about the stars, um, just different uh, things that we believe in, our stories. Um, and then on my dad's side of the family, they're um, Mexican. Uh, my grandfather was from Mexico, so um, he's Aztec, or he was Aztec. Um, so a lot of my paintings, uh, they're inspired by the way I was brought up. Um, I like to incorporate images from both of my backgrounds or my cultures to uh, represent me. Um, so I take a little bits and pieces of uh, Navajo imagery and Mexica imagery and I uh, put it together in a painting, uh, mostly just to represent my full self and not just do one thing or do another, you know. Uh, my Both uh, of my grandparents played a big role in my life. So um, the things that I paint now um, are a reflection of who I am. Uh, I, I also am a graffiti artist. Um, before I started painting all these things that were on canvas, I did a lot of my painting on the walls, um, murals. I like to work in letters. So a lot of people actually know me as Resmo rather than Natasha. Um, it, stands, <laughs> it stands for Res Funk Mama but I kind of shortened it to R-E-Z-M-O. Uh, that'll always be my first love. Uh, graffiti actually helped me to get where I am today as far as finding who I was, really understanding that you could be proud of you know, where you come from, whether it's one culture, two cultures, multicultural. Um, so yeah, today, like I said, I'm showing you my process, uh, how I, uh, paint on canvas. Uh, a lot of people have different ways. Um, I have some best friends that I paint with and the way that they do painting is a different process than me and that's okay. Uh, the, the thing about painting, it, it comes from inside. Uh, it doesn't really have to follow the steps or rules or you know and whatever you uh, pick up today are just kind of tips to help you along the way. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. Um, so I guess the basic supplies that you would need uh, is canvas. Um, you can get cheap ones from Walmart, from Michaels, um, acrylic paints. I paint with primarily acrylics. You don't have to get the fancy kind. I mean, there's some out there that are fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars a tube. Um, but if you go to Walmart, if you go to Michaels, there's little, you know, these little uh, apple barrel. They're like fifty, sixty cents. These are actually really amazing colors that come out of these things. So if you have very little money, which, you know, it happens from time to time. And when I really want to paint, I mean, pick up a few of these and you're ready to paint a canvas. Um, also a paintbrush. You could buy cheap ones, pricey ones if you got the money. Um, I, yeah, so let's get started and I'll show you my process. So today... Um, I picked up a little, I think this is an 8x10 canvas. It, 
let's let's do it this way. I feel more comfortable showing you. Okay, like I said, um, I am going to show you the steps that I follow. You don't necessarily have to follow these steps. Um, when I first begin, uh, I like to use something called a primer. This one actually is a really expensive one. Um, and normally this is used to get your canvases ready. Uh, it helps to soak up less paint. Um, so if, if you don't use one of these, I mean, you could always just use regular white paint to put down a base coat and then you let it dry. And like I said, in the long run, it helps you to use less paint when you're painting other colors. And it also um, has the colors uh, stand out brighter. Um, so yeah, let me get started with that. Also, one of my steps is to find some really good music to put on. <laughs> music inspires me, so I'm going to play a little background music. So anyways, here it is. It's almost just like white paint. Take one of these larger paint brushes. Here, this is my paint and my water. And so what you're gonna do is basically just get it and go. All over like this. And um, you could do a few coats, you could do one coat. It really depends on uh, how thick of a coat you want on it. Um, this canvas that I'm using is a small one. It is an eight by 10, I believe. Um, so here we go. Just make sure that you evenly, or try your best to evenly apply it. Get this. And like I said, if you don't have primer, you can always use just plain white paint. Um, And some people, they choose not to use it, and that's okay too, you know? It just depends on how you want to do things. Um, for me personally, I like to use it just because it allows me to use less of my other paints. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, you have to wait till this is dry before you can start applying other paint or you know, drawn on your canvas. Okay. Lucky enough, I have a dry one. So we'll go ahead and put this away. Um, and like I said, I um, a lot of the stuff that inspires my work are things that I grew up with. Uh, the stories of my culture. Um things that we grew up believing in. Uh, so a lot of the times before I do a canvas, I like to do a sketch. So I'm thinking of doing this sketch onto that canvas. Um, so yeah, so this is just a regular sketchbook, you know? So this is basically what I wanna draw on my canvas. Um, it's it's a Mexica design. I uh, I really ins inspired by the codices that um, the Mexica did on their walls. Um, they depict stories of times and ceremonies and things that happened uh, when you know their empire was great uh, before they <laughs> before they got wiped out. Um, so a lot of those old imageries, um, it just it just makes my heart feel something <laughs> so anyways um this is what I plan to paint and like I said a lot of the times you if you don't even know what you want to paint you could just start on your canvas and just kind of work through it and see what you come up with this here is a primed canvas already I did it beforehand it's had time to dry um this is the part where a lot of people make different decisions. Um, some people like to draw on the canvas first. They're drawing, um, say if I wanted to start it off first, I can um, 
draw that head on here and then paint after that. Um, today, I'm gonna show you uh, making the background first and then sketching on it. So let me just get some colors. I'm gonna do sort of a background color here. This comes out, okay. Get some dark purples in there, some light purples in there, maybe some pinks. You can tell I've been using this to paint for a really long time. There's so much paint on this palette. And get a little bit of orange. I like, I like to work with a lot of sunset colors, so here we go. And then maybe some yellow. So yeah, here is the palette that I'm going to be working with. I've got purple, a little light purple, pink, orange, yellow. Okay. And it doesn't matter how you start. I'm going to keep it long ways because I like how the face is going to sit on here. So... Let's just go ahead and do the yellow first. I'm gonna start on the bottom. Drag some yellow across here. And like I said, everybody does things differently. You might decide to draw your, uh, your design on first um, instead of going with the background. Okay, there's my yellow. I'm gonna say, okay. Let's get some orange in there. I think this is my most favorite just because living in Arizona we have some amazing sunsets. We have some killer sunrises so every time I think of that and I'm like kind of stuck on what I want to paint I always go back to huh those things are amazing you know. So let's just do a little bit of blending here. Okay. And having a paper towel might help. I don't I don't actually have one right now. I should have just to wipe off your paintbrush as you go. Okay, let's add some pink in here. Drag the color left and right. Ooh. I think this just will just be a landscape piece. I don't think I even need to put anything on here at this point. Okay. And these are just, you know, really uh, cheap colors to use, but seeing how they come out, they, I mean, these colors are fantastic. I mean, they're pretty bright. Okay, so we'll go from that to a purple. So this is where the paper towel would have came in handy. And then go with the purple, drag it across the pink. See how it just blends easy? And if you're inspired by, I don't know, nature or things around you, um, I don't know, your pets. I mean, I know a lot of amazing artists that paint their pets all the time. My kids like to draw flowers and stick figures and things like that. I don't think anybody has to be a, an amazing artist to paint, like they just have to want to paint. I think eventually, well, not think, but once you start doing it over and over again, you know, and really enjoy what you're painting or enjoying what you're doing, um, you're gonna have a great looking painting no matter what. I never thought, you know, 18, 20 years from now that I would be doing, uh, you know, things that I love like painting for a living. I mean, it's just something that I love to do. So here we go. 
And again, um, if you want to go back over it, like I, I would totally go back over it just to make the colors a little bit brighter. Um, you could. So I'm just gonna retouch it up real quick with the yellow. Make sure it blends nicely. Then we'll go back to the orange. And if there's like little white uh, streaks here and there that didn't get painted over the first time, it'll definitely get painted over the second time. Let's see, see, it looks just a little bit, a little bit oranger now. Okay, and then we'll go back to pink. This. And you know, if this isn't how it looks like the first time, then that's fine. <laughs> I'm sure my paintings didn't look like this the first time I tried it either. Um, and you don't have to do it like this. I mean, if you want to make your canvas one full color, like say your favorite color is purple, you can do the whole canvas purple if you wanted to. Oops, I think I grabbed the wrong one. Um, yeah, I'm just painting it the way the way I want to. If your favorite color is black and you want a black canvas, by all means, paint the canvas black. <laughs> and if you do end up having a full black canvas, um, I guess the, the, the nicest color that might pop out on that canvas is white paint. I've seen a lot of really amazing painters that have black canvases with white, various uh, gradients of white on their, on their black canvases. So there we go. I think I'm not gonna keep doing the background over and over again. So this is what it looks like. Um, like I said, uh, after you're after you're done with this part, uh, you can decide. Oh, okay, maybe I'll paint a flower. Put a flower in the middle. Um, I want to paint a house. Paint a house in the middle. Um, the sketch that I'm going with though is the, the sketch of the head. So after this is done drying, I'm just going to go ahead and sketch the head on there. Okay. So now that our canvas is dry, we can go ahead and start to put our design on there. Um, so if you want, you can draw it on the pencil, you know, like this is where this is going to be, um, you know, lightly draw over it, or draw over the canvas and then go back in there and start to paint over it. Uh, so right now, this is actually something that I started doing recently. Before I like to just use the pencil and draw like my little shapes here and there. But right now I'm gonna sketch it on. I just went ahead and put a glob of white paint right there. And I'm gonna get this brush here. Let's see if I can find it. I have so many different brushes. Okay. And all these different brushes do different things. Um, some of them paint straight lines, uh, fill in stuff, draw small skinny lines, just all kinds of different things. So I'm gonna use this brush and kind of use it like a pencil to like sketch it out. So I'm gonna dip it in the water. This, <laughs> like again, I should have used the paper towel and we're gonna put some of the white on it. And we're just gonna use it like a pencil, like how you would sketch. You don't have to worry about making right lines, wrong lines, because in the end you're just gonna end up 
going over it. Well, I'm gonna scoot this way. So I don't end up having enough room. So here is gonna be her nose. And as you go, you can always make different lines. If you don't like what you drew on there already, then you can go over it, and paint over it. This is just kind of like laying some some uh, rough lines down. And if you don't feel like painting that at all, then you don't have to paint it. You can just paint over it, paint something different if you don't like where it's taking you. A lot of my pieces, uh, I draw women, and it's because a lot of the women in my life, like my mom, my grandmothers, my aunts, like they paid a, played a big role in, in my life. And so, I guess I like to think of their kind of like the inspiration behind the things that I paint. I have a lot of um, amazing friends that are painters that are women they um we go and do shows together we paint i'm just so inspired by some of the stuff that they come up with so a lot of a lot of my paintings are paintings of women and a lot of them well i'm gonna say 99 percent of them always have a uh, their hair in a bun and that's just kind of like how I see Dene people, Navajo people that always um, keep their hair in buns. Tradi you know, traditionally, uh, we never cut our hair. Um, we kept it tucked in. It's like our, our power, our source of knowledge. So whenever I paint, I always like to put that in there. Okay. This is kind of like how it looked when I sketched, you know, like I said, these lines aren't permanent. Um, all right, well, there she is. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go with some skin color here. This is a tip I'm gonna go with. So here it is. I put a dark one, a light one, and kept some of the white. I'm just gonna mix a little bit. See what kind of color we're gonna get. Maybe a little. There we go. So for me, like I said, just how I how I do things. If you ask like a couple other painters, they're gonna be like, oh no, that's definitely not how we do things. <laughs>
go and let that dry for a bit. And get some black for the hair. Mix a little bit of black, a little bit of white. just a little bit so I can put a little bit more white in it and then just kind of go back and forth just to highlight some of the hair so it looks like it has some texture or some movement rather than like a flat black color so here we go Kind of blend it in with the rest of your colors here and you can just go back over it too with black and kind of give it some sort of blend there so it kind of creates movement in her hair okay so finish this part and here, where it meets, since they're both a little bit color, I try to do the part closer with more of a lighter color. See how it looks a little bit lighter, so you can see the separation between the two. thing with the bottom one. Oops. If you have to get to little small parts, you can just go with a smaller brush. Like, I see a part that's kind of missing. So move the, you, the smaller parts that you need to get, like I said, you could just use a smaller brush. This is a really tiny brush. Do that. And same thing here. I want to show a little separation so you can do this a little bit a different color. Thank <laughs> you. 
trying to make sure that I don't move the canvas.
And just remember to change your water often because if not, like how this is starting to come out a little bit darker, it's gonna make all your other colors start to be a little bit darker every time you dunk it into the water. So this is where we're at, you know, for painting sideways like how I am, it's not too bad. There are times where you have to go over, you know, areas again, like this uh, white usually have to go over white again, um, just to give it a little bit more, uh, more color to it kind of goes on um, not as thick but if you apply a second coat then you'll start to see it fills it in pretty nice Also, I like to use these things called paint markers. They're um, really good when it comes to, um, I guess, taking a shortcut. Or, you know, I, I like the colors, they're vibrant. You know, see this color here? Uh, I use this a lot when I'm painting uh, turquoise on my women. Just a little tip. I, <laughs> you can always use a, uh, cool blue and white mixed together and uh, come up with a color. But the way that you use this is just like paint inside of a marker, uh, well, paint marker. It's just like so easy to use, it glides on, like if you are using markers to paint with. Um, what I like about it is the precision. It, um, let's see. It doesn't like go all over like a brush would or and you could color it in like so. I like to use them sometimes, mostly just for, you know, the jewelry part or um, if I want something to come out looking really, really, um, I don't know what the word is really precise. So see, and of course I could have used a uh, regular paint to paint that, but I like to use paint markers here and there. Um, I also have one in red, sometimes that I'll use. Um, here are like different, different versions of paint markers. I can show you this one. See, you just color it. Of course, you can always do this with red paint. Um, just for time's sake right now, I'm just showing you how to use it. It's in your, it could be in your arsenal of tools. So, yeah, there's that. Here's a lighter version of that red. I'm gonna paint the center. You usually shake it and then give it a little pound and then more of it should come out. A lot of graffiti artists like to use this with their, with their um, sketches or their sketchbooks because it's easy to do letters with them and their, their colors are a lot better and thicker than 
just using regular like Sharpies or markers. And I think that's, that's why I like to use it because when I'm doing graffiti inside of like a, a sketchbook or like a piece, um, I use them so I'm used to using them all the time. But it's just something to show like if that if if that's something that you wanted to try in your own piece, you could have it in your in your toolkits or wherever you keep your paints. Dampen the little, the little turquoise. As a Diné person, you know, we wear a lot of turquoise. It's uh, what we believe is that we use it to protect ourselves, our minds, um, from like spiritual attacks or things that I guess we believe in. Some might not understand, but it's it's a very strong belief. The reason why we wear turquoise. Same thing, the reason why we wear our hair in a bun is to keep, you know, our knowledge flowing inside of us to, our hair is our strength. So that's why we keep it in a bun to protect it, protect ourselves. A lot of the times when you paint, um, you can come up with all kinds of different colors, um, just mixing things, knowing your color wheel, what makes what. You mix, uh, I don't know, orange and yellow together, what do you get? Or if you know how to mix a certain color of brown you want, a color wheel is always good to have. I did go to art school for um, for art, but I think the most that I have learned is everything that I've taught myself. Um, a lot of it's self-taught. I don't remember a whole lot, a lot of stuff from college. And a lot of it comes from just trying things out. Like, if you're not comfortable with things, like, just see if things work. And if they don't work, then you know that they don't work. And like I always say, don't judge your art off of another person that does art. Like, you're setting yourself up for failure. Don't compare yourself to other pieces. I mean, your art is you. It's, it's gonna be your own unique spin on art. Don't, um, don't say, oh man, mine, my piece doesn't look as good as that person's piece. Because uh, I spent a lot of time with uh, doing that myself in my younger years and that doesn't really help you okay so oh no oops from time to time this happens where she stick your hand in some paint and then it ends up getting on your getting on your actual canvas every time i put my hand down somewhere all that paint ends up being on on the canvas somewhere <laughs> so here's another paint marker it's a silver paint marker just gotta give it a little bit of shaking and then
that's why these paint markers are awesome to have just because they they have some really cool colors like gold and silver I like to use silver a lot in cufflinks or um, jewelry so yeah these things these paint markers definitely go a long way I know not a lot of people use them in their paintings but if you ever just want to see how they work or how they might help or I don't know even take away from your painting like it's it's really up to you so here we are and if you want to clean these up right here like you can it's probably one of the last things you, you can do I kind of just did it along the way because like I said there's times where your hand might fall into the paint scrape across things you you have lines like this where they need to you don't need to use them you can always just go back over them try to blend them in the best that you can so it doesn't look like they were there these might be a little tricky just because they're they're brown but here and just get as close as you can, clean up the rest of it. See, and it's like, you never made them. Just kind of blend them in. Oops. Same thing over here. And I've got some brown marks to get rid of. Kind of hard. So we do some yellow. And again, um, I do end up using the paint markers a lot when it comes to doing the earrings. Just because I like the way that they, they fill in nicely. You can always do this in a green, a green um, a green color of paint. You can always paint this on. I'm gonna go back and circle this a little bit better. And at the end, just put final touches. Go back over colors that you might think need more, more attention. I'm 
<laughs> I'm just making that worse by keeping putting my hand in it. The final thing that I like to do, um, and this is definitely just me, I always keep the eye for last. Uh, sometimes it's the hardest thing because if you don't get the eye looking right, then it throws the whole picture off. I mean, it's not going to be the same if you're painting a flower or, you know, a house or a tree or land or anything like that. It's just what I like to do last is paint the eye. And I'm going to do exactly what I did before is use this white white um paint to kind of I mean, even if I get this completely wrong and it doesn't look right, then I mean, I can always paint over it and start again. That's the beauty of uh, acrylics is if you don't like something that you painted, you can always, you know, paint over it. Since, you know, we talked a lot about paint markers, we'll do the final eye a paint marker. So, give him or give her the little pupil. Almost done. Sometimes these things can be a little testy. All you gotta do is keep shaking them and kind of dabbing them on the, on the table or something. And here we go. Let me give her a little bit of a... Alright. So, this is our finished product. 
maybe later I'll go in and clean up some more stuff here and there. Um, when things are done, it's never really done. I know I can look at all of my paintings and be like, oh my god, I gotta fix this over and over and over again. I do it a lot. I have so many pieces right now that I've finished, but I just keep looking at them and saying, huh, I can do this, I can do that, you know? So, even though I'm saying this is finished now, uh, I'll probably end up working on it to, you know, kind of even things out or go over it again or clean up some of these little spots that uh, kind of got splattered there while I was um, rubbing up against it. That's, that's a really good tip too, is make sure that your paints are dry before you keep trying to move your hand all around it. Um, I'm just looking for a dab of white. And just give a little sparkle in the eye. See, every time I think I'm finished, I see something that I want to do. And you're going to end up doing that a lot. It's like, okay, I'm done. But you're not really done. A little dab of white in there. A little dab of white. Oops, it's not dry enough yet. So. Okay. So there we go. This was done very fast in the little time that we had together. Uh, I enjoy painting um, just because maybe that's the, well, no, I, I won't say maybe. It, it's definitely a way to let out a lot of things, feelings, emotions as a parent, as, you know, somebody that's working. Sometimes that's the only, you gotta find healthy outlets and this is my healthy outlet <laughs> is painting. Uh, one of the other paintings that I finished recently was this one. Um, I spent a lot of time on it. And I, like I said, it has a uh, Danea Mexica influences in it. Um, so yeah. I just want to thank you for um, painting with me today. Uh, look up tips. Like if, if you feel like there's other things that I could have done differently or you think you could do differently, um, you can always look tips, look up tips on the internet. You know, I, I ask my friends sometimes like, hey, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? Or how, how do you incorporate a little bit of the white on there? Or how do you make it look a little bit popped up? Or how can I get a little bit more texture, you know? Um, as you paint more and more, you'll, you'll pick up so many cool little things. So anyways, thank you. Um, thank you to the Octavian Fullin Library for uh, having me uh, present this today. And uh, yeah, good night.